The 225th edition of the State U men's basketball rivalry revolves around Mike Dom. The Jackrabbit senior is just 19 points away from becoming the 10th player in NCAA history to reach 3,000 career points. The Coyotes would like to change the narrative, though, and prove that they can hang with their in-state rivals after losing by 18 in Vermillion last month, which is easier said than done because the Coyotes have gone nearly two decades without a win in Frost Arena. This is a new group, though, and they came out on fire from three. That's Cody Kelly from long range. He had 21. USD takes the lead. SDSU no pushover either. There's Skylar Flatt and the Clark Willow Lake alum with the big-time rim rocker. He had 18, and we're tied up in the early going. Jackrabbits trying to regain the lead after a timeout. Here's Dom catching the feed and laying it up and in as SDSU still tied up, though, because the Kyles are just going nuts from downtown. Here's Stanley Amude for three. And USD's up two. The Jacks will take it inside for two of their own. It's going to be Tevin King who had a career day. Look at how the lane just parts and he slams that one. He had a career high 22. But USD was 11 of 19 from three in the first half. The biggest surprise, this guy, Logan Power, the walk-on. He had 11. USD was up 11 and as many as 16. But in the final minute of the game, SDSU down one. They go to Dom. That is career point number 3,000. Would you expect anything less than a game winner from him as SDSU gets the victory 94 to 89. We'll have more on this one tonight at 10 o'clock. Though the Summit League tournament is still two weeks away, it's already semifinal Saturday for local NAIA schools in the North Star and GPAC tournaments. Dakota Wesleyan's men looking to upset top seeded Morningside. It's the Mustangs who strike first on their home court, Tyler Borchers. Gets the tough shot to fall for two of his 13 points. These two played some competitive games throughout the regular season, and this was more of the same. It's the star for D-Dub, Ty Hoagland, drilling a three. He finished with 26 points, and the Tigers keep it rolling when Aaron Amadu drives and banks home the layup. D-Dub was up six at the break. However, Morningside gets the last laugh. Brody Egger had a game-high 28 and the Tigers are eliminated from the GPAC tournament, 88 to 81, but they're likely going to be in the NAIA tournament when the field is announced. Of course, that tournament's gonna be at the Sanford Pentagon. In the other semifinal, Dort falls at Jamestown, 89 to 76. Better news for the Dakota Wesleyan women, though. They win at second seeded Northwestern, 75 to 66. So they will take on Concordia for the GPAC championship down in Seward, Nebraska on Tuesday. It's, of course, a rematch of the national title game a year ago, and it's the seventh time in two years these two teams will play, that's quite a few. The new North Star Final Four up in Watertown tipping off this afternoon. The presentation, women looking to upset top seed Mayville State, and that certainly helps. April Huddlesworth with a spin and shot off glass. She had nine as the Saints tie things up in the early going. However, Mayville's the top seed on this tournament for a reason, and they show why. There's Taylor Scordall with the three. The Comets streaking out to a six point lead, and then after a timeout, it's Nicole Bunting extending it to eight with a spin move. She had 14 points and presentation gets eliminated 71 to 44. Now the Saints men are gonna hope for better luck in the semifinal this evening with Mayville State at eight o'clock. If they win that one, they'll play for the North Star title tomorrow at four o'clock up in Watertown. Final day of the regular season in the NSIC. Augustana hosting a doubleheader with Southwest Minnesota State at the Elman Center. Three point shooting carried the Mustangs to a win over the Vikings last month in Marshall. And Aliyah Reinhardt continues that theme with a three to give SMSU the lead. However, Dave Krause Vikings would get right back into this one. Vishay Rab drives in and gets three the old fashioned way with the hoop and the harm. And then off a Viking miss, it's the Viberg native, Abby Ora, getting the rebound tap to her and putting it back up and in as the Vikings take an early five point lead. Very high scoring game this one though. SMSU can clean the glass as well as Callie Rodning. We'll get the putback. It was 28-27, Augie after one, the final, and a high scoring and entertaining game. 95-83, the Vikings get the win. The men's game was up next. This one tipping off not long ago, actually, at 5.30, and boy, the Mustangs come out running. Michael Lee, the Dawson Boyd alum, Trabian, as it's now a 7-0 lead, and Ryan Brueggemann, their all-time leading scorer, he's gonna extend it, because he does stuff like that. Steal and score, as the Mustangs get out to a 9-0 lead. Brad Bigler has to be liking what he's seeing, and so much we actually showed it twice, but here come the Vikings. Dylan LeBrun, the Flandreau native, off glass for the big bucket as they get back to within five. And actually, Senator John Thune watching this one. He's seeing quite an entertaining one as Matt Cartwright nails a three, and right now they are tied at 31 in the first half. We'll have more on this one at 10. 
It's a championship Saturday for the Summit League in South Dakota with the swimming and diving meets concluding in Sioux Falls and the indoor track and field championships coming to a close in Brookings where partner Zach Anderson with a Summit League record seven foot two and a quarter inch high jump for the title. SDSU's team has won the team title. We'll have more updated scores and highlights coming up tonight at 10 o'clock. Finally, a little high school hoops this afternoon. The fourth ranked team in AA, Brandon Valley hosting number three, St. Thomas Moore. They're the number three team in Class A. The links go inside Alex Teachin. His team trailing by th two. They're not trailing anymore as they knock things up in the opening minutes. The Cavs, however, go on a 6-0 run. Nice backdoor cut to Michael Geitlin as they take a six-point lead out. And that's when Brent Deckard's team turns it over to Evan Talcott, who got on fire late in the quarter. Here he drains one from beyond the arc. And then in the final seconds of the quarter, he's going to get a runner to go to beat the buzzer. Talcott had 10 of their 13 points in the first quarter, and Brandon Valley gets the win 62-52. A lot more coming up tonight at 10. State wrestling, the Stampede Wiener Dog races, and plenty more. We're back in one moment. 